Good afternoon. I wanted to thank you guys for coming and actually coming back in the room because I know it's beautiful outside today. Um, I also wanted to thank Louisa, Ellen, and Emily for inviting us to participate. I'm Samantha Deutsch, and this is Jal Roof. Um, as you can see from this slide, there are many more contributors involved in this project, and without them, Aries wouldn't be here today. Um, I will quickly explain why Aries was designed and give an outline of the project's timeline, and then Zhao will show you Aries in action. And we don't have time to show you everything. Um, and also, I just wanted to preface that we're not using machine learning. This is really just for the everyday art historian. Okay. So I'm gonna rehash a couple things we talked about yesterday, but to reveal why Aries was designed, we need to look at how art historians worked with images before they were digital. Working with comparing photographs on a table or organizing and examining images via slides in a light box. Pedagogically, we use slides with carousel and projected images on a wall or screen, comparing and contrasting images, or organizing slides into collections, study collections, by genre, period, subject matter, etc. Organization, prioritizing images over file names. This is often a too familiar sight for many art historians. PowerPoint opened our world and allowed for new types of presentations, such as this one. Or we could create a slide like this, recreating a historical hang, where works of art are shown in relative size to one another. Creating something like this can and did take a couple hours. Clicking and dragging images onto a slide, resizing and organizing them, and then comparing their dimensions, trying to lay them out so they'd be displayed to scale with one another. It really did take me two hours. <laughs> or an art historian may want to compare a painting located in a villa in Florence with a work located in London, which was thought to be the surviving cartoon or preparatory drawing for the painting. In order to do this, the art historian had a life-size reproduction of the relevant portion of the painting made for him, and he traveled to London with it for a side-by-side -side comparison, only to discover that the cartoon, while it may indeed be by the same artist, was really not the right dimensions. Oh, did I fast forward a little too fast? <laughs> Is this, this is the comparison with the cartoon. I don't know how far I went for you guys. Um, where was I with that? Okay, good. <laughs> so this is the side-by-side -side comparison. And then, oh, I wanted to say we benefited from technology advances such as image recognition applications as TinEye and Google Images and are able to use old black and white photographs, sometimes the only surviving documentation of that work of art ever existed, to find similar works of art from images published online. However, we yearned for a space where we would be able to explore images further, taking tasks we complete in multiple applications, PowerPoint, Photoshop, Keynote, etc., having those functions available in one place where images and our observations would be prioritized over text and where we could import and export our data, thus saving you the time and anguish of repetitive time-consuming tasks. And our work would be transferable to other applications when applications became outdated. This is a similar historical hang I showed in the previous slide, the few slides back, and this took minutes, as you'll see when Zhao shows you in his presentation. Here's an illustration of the analysis of the painting and cartoon in Aries. Not only can we look at them side by side, as shown in the earlier slide, the cartoon is laid on top of the painting, an overlay, and without having to spend time on adjusting the transparency or resizing the works of art to scale, Aries does this for you, and we get a more exact comparison. What you're seeing here is the first prototype for Aries. Our collaboration began in the spring of 2014, and by 2015, we had our first prototype. We received, in 2017, we received a grant 
to transform the prototype to a beta version. So I just want to say thank you to our anonymous donor. Without you, we wouldn't be here. Um, a paper was accepted in the IEEE Computer Graphics, published in January 2018. And we were also invited, and Lila Krisaf um, presented at 2017 IEEE Visualization Conference. And hopefully in June 2018, you will all be able to use ARIES yourself. So I will turn this over to Zhao, who will show you ARIES in action. Hello, everyone. Good morning. So, so I'm one of ARIES developers at NYU, and I'm here to talk a little bit about how you can use ARIES to help your image exploration. So our idea with this project is not to use machine learn, learning or something like this, but to do a manually ex exploration of our, our art image data sets. So first, I'll show you three videos about how to use ARIES, and like a little tutorial of how you can use ARIES. So here I want to talk a little bit about ARIES interface. So, but before that, it's important to notice that ARIES is a project-based tool. This way you can better organize the image data sets we're working with. So, now you can see, here's the main interface of ARIES, and it, the ARIES interface has five main components. The image menu here, the group menu, the metadata container, the lightbox canvas, and the header. I'll start talking about the image menu. That's the place where you can see all the images uploaded to the project. As you can see in the video, once you upload an image to the project, it will appear in the image menu. We can also manually organize in these images on the image menu. Uh, the second component of ARIES interface I want to talk about is this group menu. That's the place where you can create new groups and start to add images to these groups. That's a good feature when we have lots of images on a project and wants to organize them following any specific criteria. Okay, now the third component of ARIES interface I want to talk about is the lightbox canvas. So, that's the place where we can drag and drop images from the image menu or from the group menu and start to transform in these images, like resizing the images and also rotating these images. Um, but there's one key feature of ARIES uh, is that the dynamic overlay of images. Once we overlap two images, the opacity of the <laughs> images changes. This way, art historians can check how similar two images are and then find find fine difference between two images. Now I want to talk about the metadata container on that side. So that's the place where we can edit the image metadata, like the author name, the title of the image, and also the, the year, the provenance, and so on. ARIES comes with 10 predefined metadata fields that we can edit, but we can also add custom metadata fields, as, as you can see on the video. So here, I will add another metadata field just by defining a name to this field and also define the type of this field. This is great because later we can search images by these fields and also sort our image data sets using these newly created fields. And there's another cool feature of ARIES is that, is that we can edit this metadata in collaboration with other users because ARIES gives us the capability to share this project among lots of users. So that's a great way to gather new information about the images and work in conjunction with another users. So, as you can see in the video, we're adding in the metadata for that image. And so, and once you click on an image in the Lightbox Canvas, the corresponding metadata will appear there on our metadata container. So, now I'll show you the second video. Here, here I want to talk a little bit about the tools we have in ARIES that helps in our image analysis. So on this video, I want to talk about two tools we have in ARIES, the Rectangle Tools and the Lens Tool. But first, you, as you can see in the video, we opened a pre-created project with several images. So now the Rect Tool works as the following. We have to pile several images you want to compare with each other, and then we can draw a rectangle on top of the area we want to compare. So as you can see in the video, we are drawing a rectangle on the face of the image, and the areas will generate uh, the difference between the pixels of the images being compared. So as you can see in the middle is the difference between the pixels, and on the sides, the images being compared. We can also reselect the comparison by choosing all the images between the ones we, we piled on the first time. At the bottom, actually, you can see what portion of the image is being compared. This way, you can have a bigger picture of the comparison. So now we would like to talk about the lens tool. 
This is a great tool to find matching points on two images. It works, as you can see on the video, it works as a following. You have to select the images you want to compare and then match the points you want to compare. And then areas, bring the areas you want to compare side by side. This way, it's easier to compare two areas of the image because the, dist the physical distance in the screen between the comparison areas is reduced. So, now, at this last video, I want to talk to you a little bit about the tools you have in Ares that works with the metadata I told in the first video. So, now we're once again opening a pre-created project with several images, and also Ares uh, saves the organization of the images on the canvas. We can see that we also have several groups. And by clicking on the images, we can see that the metadata for lots of them are pre-filled. So here, the idea is to work with a group. So we can clear the canvas, and then we just have to drag and drop a groove to the canvas, and then Ares will automatically render the, the image that belongs to this group and the canvas. And it's, it's important to notice that we can collapse the main components of Ares. This way we can use the Lightbox canvas in a better way, like uh, if, you, if you have lots of images on the canvas. So, one field I want to talk about on the metadata containers is dimensions fields. Field. This field in the, uh, specifies the height and the width of each image on the, on the canvas. This way we can rescale the image to its relative size. This is a good feature to, feature to check how images will look like side by side on a real world. So, and then we can start to organize the images freely on the canvas. Uh, another tool that Ares have that works with the image dimensions is the wall tool. The idea behind this tool is to generate, uh, to simulate a wall like a wall in an, on a regular exposition. Uh, so we, it works as a following. We, we can select the image we want in the wall and then generate a wall by the, uh, defining the height and the width of the wall. We can also define an optional name to this wall. We are not defining there. So once you create the wall areas, you will rescale all the images to the size of, uh, take into consideration the size of the wall and also proportionally to each, to each image. This way we can see how the image will look like side by side uh, on a real wall. Uh, and you can also organize the images on this wall. And Ares also gives us the capability of saving this wall. This way you can compose an entire exposition just by creating walls and then saving walls, and then you can come back to these walls later. And now, the last one to talk about is the tag tool. This is a great tool to highlight new discoveries we do in the pictures. For example, if we want to highlight some feature, we just have to draw a rectangle around this, this feature and then name this this new tag. Then the areas will automatically incorporate this tag to the metadata of the image. This is good because later we can search images by these newly created tags and also uh, easily search for, for these tags on our data sets. So that's it. I want to talk that Ares is available online on this link, artimageexplorationspace.com. And while you're using Ares, if you have some suggestion to us or if you, have, if you find some bug, we can reach us on GitHub, just opening an issue there. Uh, thank you, everyone.